Hey folks, Sean here. And in this episode, what I want to talk to you about is setting realistic timeline expectations for the milestones that you want to achieve with your B2B SaaS. Now, because it's probably the strongest level of interest, I'm going to focus on hitting certain revenue goals. And I'm going to compare my experience with a few others that I know have done this successfully so that you have a better idea what to expect. And I'm also hoping that this will take some pressure off of you once you realize what this typically takes from a realistic perspective. So now, of course, the trap here is that if you start Googling around or browsing subreddits or whatever, there's going to be a ton of stories about there about the ungodly amount of money everyone is making, apparently, that's leveraging software or some type of online business and ridiculously fast, like, I don't know weeks, days, hours, minutes, <laughs> something crazy. Uh, I see it from time to time. It's like, here's how fast we got to some unrealistic number. Let's just say 10K MRR. I hit that in three weeks. All right. Well, number one, it's the internet. So take that with a huge grain of salt. Number two, I've never personally seen anything like that. And I've been in this for decades at this point. So I want you to take that under consideration. So I, for the most part, like automatically dismiss a lot of that stuff. I don't disregard it as in, if there's a story there, that's something I could chase down. I will, because I want to learn about it too. Maybe it'll help me learn something that I can then share with you. What I'm sharing with you now is that I have yet to come across that <laughs> for the most part, everyone I know that's hit some type of very impressive goal relatively quickly hasn't happened in less than at least I would say the, the vast majority of a year to hit a pretty substantial milestone like that. In my opinion, more like 10 K MRR or sometimes higher, but, and that's after quite a lot has already been done. That's after launch. That's after having the product. That's after having a successful channel that enables you to be able to grow. So from zero, it's actually quite a bit longer. I read a post this morning, someone else who's expected to be on the podcast and sharing their story. I just recorded a podcast with Mac Martin last week. He achieved 58 K MRR before he ultimately sold his product. That took years. The post that I read this morning for someone else that's going to be on the show uh, for her business also took years I mean, for her based on that post, getting to any revenue for her took a year and a half and then getting to a significant revenue milestone for her, which was I think 20 K MRR took another year and a half. So again, if you walk backwards from hitting some of these milestones, you're talking about years Now that trajectory has continued similar to the one that Mac was on, but more years have been added. So this, you know, the, the takeaway here is that this is a process that is most likely to take you years to reach something that you might consider substantial. Now, at the same time, it's also a SaaS product. So it scales pretty significantly and you can catch fire, or like grab some kind of momentum at any given point in time. Like that's always a possibility. What I'm trying to normalize here is that it's not necessarily a probability and it's going to require you to have to do most of the pushing, but at some point you might catch a lucky break, right? Just like people that are in the game may ultimately have a lot of success. So like, are you going to hit the lottery? I, odds are likely that you will not, <laughs> right? Whether you buy a ticket or not, but is it possible if you've bought a lottery ticket? Yes. Is it possible if you have not bought a lottery ticket? No. And that's kind of how I want you to think about that significantly viral growth. Now, what really happens, you know, while you're trying to grow your business is you're pushing in a number of areas. You're experimenting, right? You're evaluating the health and the return that various channels are producing. And then you are doubling down on the winners. You're replacing the losers with something else. And you're continuing to do that till you make sure that they're all producing a return and that everything is going well. Over time, your sales, your marketing, your product, all these things should improve. And depending on what needs the most attention in the moment is where you'll more than likely be spending your time, right? This sounds relatively intuitive because for the most part it is, but for whatever reason, these stories are not shared all that often because I don't know, I guess it's not as sexy 
uh, that blocking and tackling is what wins games. That's, but that's the, the case. That is the truth, right? Like strong defense, blocking and tackling. These are the things that back when I was playing sports were like the fundamentals of if you want to succeed, you need to have a strong foundation, right? It's hard to build a home that's going to last a long time on a weak foundation. Same thing with building a SaaS business, right? So I want you, number one, to have realistic expectations. And number two, understand that it is the journey itself is the exciting, very interesting part and the type of business that you're interested in getting involved in, if you have a SaaS business, always has the potential to reach a ridiculous level of scale if you continue to pursue it, you continue pushing on it. Uh, eventually, it will go and you will cross these milestones. You may be aware of it when it happens, you may not, because it's just you're in it for the love of the game. And that's the way that I approach it. And that's the way I'd encourage you to do so as well.